All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for tuning back in. It's time for me to bring to you guys my CF champ that I played this league for our third 10 div character working in Project Apothecary. The next step was to do some magic find and we'll have the video about magic find in full coming up. But I figured with the last video being me talking about things that I learned while magic finding, I think I would rather give you guys the character first this time, try something out. Let me know if you like this adaptation, by the way. I'm not really sure if it should be video for build first and then strategy or strategy then video. Let me know in the comments which way you feel about that. But here we are with the character. CF champ I feel like this character has gotten so much stronger since the last time I played it the last time I played it personally was back in Lake of Calandra League and there's quite a few things that have really made this character feel incredible the biggest thing that actually inspired me to do it this time because I'm known pretty well for not liking magic find I just don't like the loot clicks but I love CF always have and the addition of returning projectiles really made me want to come back to it and I finally found an excuse to do it this league. Returning projectile support makes a KB go off like crazy. And it's a double damaged thing instead of a 39% damage because all of our damage is coming from the Corrupting Fever debuff as opposed to the actual skill of Kinetic Blast. It's just, it's just perfect. I love it. It makes the character so fast. There was a little bit of a gearing thing to solve to make it work perfectly, but it, it was just so worth it and the character is so fast and you get to click on some loot and you get to have a good time and everything is exploding. Overall, like the footage you see in the background, it's just a microcosm of how good it has felt to play. It's been very nice to return to the character. It's worth noting though, this character is not meant for all content, right? This is very much a mapping focused character, like mapping, mapping, not even like, not boss rushing. Even the essences that I had in these maps felt a bit risque, but it worked out because of my rampage stacking, similar for breach bosses, blight bosses. Those were actually fairly scary for me because they are boss category enemies legion generals but with the stacks of rampage with entire learning stacks you can actually still burn through them pretty quickly so if you're looking at the footage you're thinking man he is tearing those big those big enemies apart no the rampage stacks are tearing that enemy apart the actual character itself does not have nearly as much damage as you think it does it's just meant to be a mapper and that's its sole purpose right something you're going to learn through the challenge is that characters are meant to do specific things and be really good at that one thing. You can make a lot of money in this game just by being good at one thing in particular. This is a magic finding strategy, which means that we need to find items. We need to kill monsters. Corrupting Fever is by far one of the best ways to do it when applied through Kinetic KB. That's just the map that we went with on how to actually kill monsters effectively, quickly, and also in just a way that I find fun, right? That's the most important thing. Remember, I talked about this previously, have fun. Especially with the last video about why I cut certain pieces out of my character. Having fun is more important than anything. And this character is a boatload of fun. Anyways, I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about the character. So you guys can just very quickly see how I put it together. And then get right to it, right? Because you've, you've got monsters to kill. Come on. We can't be wasting all this time. Alright, so now to cover the gear a little bit. You can see it all in the PLB that will be in the description as well as the properly upgraded version. There's a couple things that I really wanted to highlight about the decisions I made, especially with contests from my previous video in which I talked about how you don't want to make too many con concessions on power on your character for magic finding. Find the concessions that work for you. And so for me, one of the biggest concessions that I didn't make is Greed's Embrace. I felt that the chest made me too slow. Genuinely, that's all it was. I have a plus two duration greeds that I tested and I decided I literally just hated how slow it made me. So I opted for a tabula instead because I value the plus two over any other stat that I need on a chest piece and it keeps it very cheap. Additionally, we didn't actually have ring slots that were competitive, at least within reasonable budget and things that I could fit in in here. Like Herald of Purity rings are very solid for damage increases mark of submission rare curse on hit rings but venters are just so solid they do a lot and i can get the rest of what i need elsewhere right but we didn't sacrifice the amulet i can't use the ascetic cf only has a couple ways to scale levels is the biggest one of it so not having a plus level amulet felt like an absolute throw if i were to run something such as ascetic or bisco's leash collar my bad leash is down here on my belt but I wanted the damage, so we get a, a rare amulet. Similarly for Centaurus, Centaurus is not given enough quant to be worth using over a plus one fist shield that can also fill in some resistances, right? So we learn over the course of the process, what pieces took up too much of my gears, my gears necessary power 
in order to give me magic vine. And this is the set, the best arrangement that I found. We still run a good bit of it though, right? I have a rarity plus rarity craft helmet. I have the double venters. I have a biscos. I have the gold worm and I have a flask. And that's my sources of rarity, at least on this level of budget, right? You can go further. Once you go further, you look at the, it, the upgraded PLB in the description. It goes really far to combine with things such as our Caspiro time which that we have here. You can get rarity notables nearby. You know, you can even get rarity here. With Kaspira, we could tattoo everything to be rarity. You can go really hard on the magic find, but you know, within the budget, I was more focused on raw character power than I was on maximizing magic find. Right? Speaking of maximizing character power, some other things to keep in mind when you're doing stuff like this. Magic find is a strategy that hinges heavily on killing many enemies. Inspired learning gets very cheap very quickly after its nerfs a couple leagues ago with the changes to how mod rare modifiers work becoming arc and modifiers it get this jewel gets very cheap very quickly and it's very strong take advantage of it it just makes you faster it makes you tankier it's all around it even makes you actually just do more damage if you get the fizz aura so it's very good otherwise double clusters because there aren't very many nodes on the tree that give us damage and we literally just want them for large the large notables and the jewel socket we're one of the few builds that does not care about the ordering of these the only thing that could be technically better is if Iron Breaker was, was Battle Hardened, but Battle Hardened here instead is really expensive and outside of the budget, so we don't do that, right? Additionally, just good rare jewels. There's one piece to the build that is mandatory. This Watcher's Eye is actually completely necessary. It's the reason why this is the first build in the sequence that actually has a Watcher's Eye in it, because I couldn't justify not having it. The life gain on hit is very important for enabling us to use returning projectiles on our kinetic blast and that's why you see the clear looks so good in the video because kb clear in the past has always been very good but the addition of returning projectile support gives us so much more clear speed because we're stacking so many more stacks of cf on target so much quicker like look at that and that looks slow because i have that attack speed and that proj speed and everything but when you're in the map and it's just and it looks incredible so that extra power increase is afforded to us by not needing life gain on hit support this normally is a life gain on hit support if you do not have a watcher's eye to give you your life gain on hit you can also do things such as a, a thief's torment but it does cost you in some reds in some other magic find stats but this is another way to open up the space to use returning projectiles instead of life gain on hit support for the increased clear speed also when gearing this character do not skimp on the wand the wand is massive. It is the majority of your damage as you just straight up do not get very many damage sources. You want your levels. You want your dot multi. If you're like me and you use spiritual aid on budget setups, you can also get percent minion damage here. There's a lot of opportunity for damage healing on the wand and it's where you're going to find a lot of your power comes from. Last piece here to cover is again, like really, it really is the spiritual aid piece. I just want to really hammer that home because it is so important that you take advantage of spiritual aid because it does just give you ways to invest in things such as looking for slumlord on your elegant hubris instead of just percent fist damage instead of just rarity you can now actually look for a damage notice well there that's just the power that it has anyways that's a quick look at the character you'll be able to see it all in the description you can also check out the upgraded version down below hope you guys enjoyed the character thank you for watching